Welcome into uh, Friday edition of Midday Motivation. We thank God for each of you. Um, as you come in, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment to uh, share a word that represents your mental state, how your day has been going. Uh, also take a moment to uh, hit the share button and encourage others to come on and join us. Uh, one of the things that I uh, put out a little bit earlier, and we'll kind of revisit this in just a bit, um, but we put out a um, we put out a a short de uh, promo that um, that pretty much kind of challenged each of us to uh, take a moment and just uh, reflect on the friendships that we have. And if we have a true friend, an authentic friend, if you wouldn't mind uh, posting a picture of you and that friend and um, tagging the church tagging that friend and ideally it would have been a situation where you would have uh, joined midday motivation together uh, but if you can do that sometime today um, again just find a picture of you and an authentic friend of yours uh, post it um, on your timeline uh, make sure that you tag them make sure you tag faith christian church and then i would encourage you uh, to also use the hashtags group care and midday motivation and if you could do that, it would be great. I think it would be um, valuable. People would know that uh, they have a friend, but also uh, know that we're in this together. And so if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment to do that at some point today, uh, in addition to taking the time to going ahead and dropping a word into the comments uh, that represents your mental state today or how your day's been going, and also uh, taking a moment to hit the share button to make sure that you're sharing with uh, with all of those that are in your your friends network that you would bring them in to be able to uh, participate in this so we've been talking about um, friendship this week we started on Monday uh, talking a little bit about what friendship is not uh, we spent some time on Wednesday uh, talking about mutualism and the important role that plays in uh, the whole concept of uh, friendship and the importance of it in your mental health and then today we're going to talk specifically about authentic friendship. Uh, and so before we kind of get into that, I just wanted to give you that roadmap. Uh, we'll just have a word of prayer, just asking God to guide us through our discussion today. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, for blessing us throughout this day and also throughout this week. You've been so good to us and we appreciate all that you have done and all that you're doing. Lord, even if we've come to this midday motivation with our minds on something else, our, our, our physical and our mental state, our emotional state, not necessarily being top tier. We're just asking, Lord, that you would lead and guide us, that through this time of group care, that we would come out of it, Lord God, uh, feeling better, more optimistic, more enthusiastic, more encouraged. And Lord, we would just be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for you alone deserve it. We ask that you would bless those that are currently tuned in, as well as those that will tune in later, that they will benefit from what is said today. And this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, again, you know, before we really launch into uh, the meat of what we're going to talk about today, I just wanted to um, remind you again that if you haven't already, just put a word in the comments that represents your mental state currently or how your day has been going so far. And then also just take a moment uh, to also hit the share button and then that will invite in others. Uh, who want to participate or want to engage in group care with us. Uh, the other thing that I kind of mentioned earlier that um, I would just challenge you to do, and that is that if you wouldn't mind, uh, sometime, um, in, whether it be today or, or the next day or so, uh, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and finding a picture of somebody who is an authentic friend and then posting uh, that picture and when you post that picture, um, tag them, tag Faith Christian Church, and also use the hashtags group care and the hashtag midday motivation. Uh, that way it would just ensure uh, that um, we're, we're just seeing that some of the things that we're learning, we're putting into practice, we want people to know that friendship is real and those of us who have at least one real friend, uh, we're blessed. And we're gonna talk about how it is a blessing to have one good friend and we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail so um, so as we uh, continue in our uh, our discussion about friendship we know that this is mental health awareness month and that we are um, 
spending time talking about topics that impact mental health. And so last week we spent a, a good bit of time talking about loneliness. This week we're dealing with friendship. Next week we're going to deal with happiness. And I know that it's been a challenge for uh, a lot of people uh, to kind of figure out, well, how does, um, how does friendship have anything to do uh, with mental health? And we've, we've gone through that in a lot of detail. So anybody who's just tuning in and you, you haven't really uh, been able to make that connection, I would encourage you to go back and watch Monday's um, session and Wednesday session, which would clarify a lot of that for you. And, um, and then that way you can always catch back up to what it is that we're talking about right now. And so as we think about this and we're thinking about what God is, is, is teaching us about what uh, friendship is not, and we know that there is no such thing as a toxic friendship. That's an oxymoron. You can't put those two words together. If it's toxic, it may be a relationship, but it's not a friendship. Friendships have always been in a positive context. And the reason for that, as we've defined friendship, is that friendship comes from the Hebrew word um, raw, which means to tend to a flock that is at pasture or trying to make sure that it is well fed. Uh, also, it means to pastor or to shepherd. Uh, so a friend is one that is attempting to make sure you're well nourished, making sure that you are well fed, making sure that you're being cultivated, and they're the ones that are going to be challenging you to be great. Uh, there's no way that anyone who is working against you, anyone that is counterproductive is a friend. They may be an acquaintance, they may be a family member, they may be a relative, whatever it is that there may be a proper name for it, they are not a friend. And so when we talked about what a friend is not on Monday, then we talked about the fact that friendship uh, requires mutualism, meaning that both parties benefit. So we've been in situations where we've been a friend to somebody that has not been a friend back to us. Uh, and we wanted people to bring that back to their mind because we want you to think about some people who have been a blessing to you that you may not have been a blessing back to. And, and understand that uh, there needs to be mutuality. It needs to be uh, symbiotic. It cannot be a situation where one is giving and the other one is just receiving. That is not a friendship. That is not something uh, that God has really ordained to be beneficial to you. Uh, that is parasitic in nature. And so we, we talked about a number of things about that and, and, and now that brings us kind of to where we are right now, just talking about the fact that friendship is powerful. And the reason it's powerful, we, we talked about a lot of the clinical studies that have been conducted where people who have gone through traumatic situations and even that trauma, um, when they are reflecting on it and when they're re recounting it and when they're talking about it, uh, the trauma that they have experienced, the things that they've been through, that usually when people have to bring that stuff back up, it devastates them. But when they're recounting it in the presence of a friend, it doesn't have the same effects. It doesn't take them to the dark place that it, it, it does when they are not in the accompaniment of a friend, which just lets you know that there's something about a friend that even um, impacts our internal uh, chemical balance and, and our own internal uh, chemical makeup. And that is the power of friendship and so we, we spent some time on Wednesday talking about the fact that uh, we've heard when we were kids that we have five senses and then we, we extended that that now current science uh, suggests that there are actually seven senses there's a sense of sight sense of smell sense of taste sense of hearing sense of touch that all of us are familiar with uh, but there's also the vestibular system and there's also the proprioception system, um, two different systems, one uh, that gives us a sense of balance, the other gives us a spatial awareness. Um, but what I uh, proposed last time when we were together on Wednesday was that there is an eighth sense, and that eighth sense is our ability to know how we fit socially within the world. And uh, there is an external organ, uh, unlike all of the other senses um, that are internal organs, there's an external organ that gives us access to how we fit socially within uh, the world. And that external organ is a friend. A friend is that external organ that helps us to be situated within a social context and understand how we truly fit. And the reason it's important is because uh, many of us struggle to know uh, that we are, val we val we are valued, that uh, we have significance, that we have a place in this world. 
And so that would, that's what leads many people uh, into um, depression and, and other areas uh, beyond just the physical component of that, that many of us find ourselves struggling trying to find out why am I here? Why, why am I in the world? What is my purpose, God? I, I just don't know why uh, I'm here and, and I'm having a hard time figuring it out with my natural senses. But when you have a friend, that's somebody that sees your potential even when you can't see it. That's somebody who sees you for who you can be, not just merely for who you are. And, and that is somebody that's going to challenge you. And this is where the definition comes in. They're going to shepherd you. They're going to make sure that you're going to be pa out to pasture and be nurtured and nourished. They're going to make sure that the things that are obstacles for you, they're going to help remove those obstacles. They're going to be the ones that are going to see your blind spots and, and help you to back up safely and make sure that you're making those three-point turns without... Uh, making any meaningful mistakes. They're the ones that are there to support you. And I think that many of us, as we did our inventory, and we saw it in the comments, that a lot of us had to revisit the fact that we don't have that many friends. And that's okay. Um, because if you understand friendship, it costs you something to be a friend. Uh, friendship is not something you do cavalierly. It's not something that you do in your part time. It's not something that you do every couple years. It is something that requires an exertion of energy and an emotional um, toll is placed on you to give of yourself uh, to somebody else. And so you don't, you don't give that much to just anybody. One of the things that I know is I don't have anyone that I've ever classified as a friend that I never had an actual disagreement and, and a falling out. In fact, we argued quite a bit in the early stages of our friendship. And one of the things that uh, you'll know about certain people, a lot like me, is that um, if we don't consider you a friend, we're not gonna waste our time arguing with you. We're just gonna move on because uh, friends are people worth arguing with and for. Um, Non-friends, not so much. Uh, you, you're willing to just let it go, okay, whatever. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're not even my friend anyway. Uh, and so when you think about what friends do, friends will go to bat for you and they will go to bat with you. Um, they understand that sometimes they have to take the hard line with you because that is what you need. And so as we kind of think about this, uh, we're reminded of the fact that a friend in essence is that external organ that gives us the data necessary to figure out how we're situated within a social context in this world. And so if you hearken back to when you're in middle school, you're in high school, uh, many of us made it through because we had a friend that reminded us that we were not defined by what was in the yearbook, we are not defined by what uh, some people think, that we have so much life ahead of us and that we needed to make sure that we didn't try to define ourselves by what we do and what other people think about us. Uh, that we have to understand that there is a great purpose for us and our friends challenge us uh, to achieve that purpose. And so it's powerful to know that you have a friend. It's comforting to know that you have a friend. And so we looked at a couple of scriptures last time uh, one was Proverbs 17 and 17, and the other was 1 Corinthians 13 and 6. And I kind of put them together and want to kind of share with you uh, the impact that both of those scriptures uh, essentially have. And so if you remember, Proverbs 17, 17 said, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Uh, we also know that uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 6 uh, tells us uh, that, uh, and this is picking up with uh, something that's stated about love beforehand, that love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. And so what I would say to you, if you put these two things together, it's basically saying that a friend loves at all times, and their love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that a friend uh, loves you and love is an is not an emotion it is a commitment and that commitment as we see in chapter 13 of Corinthians is one that's long-suffering that does not puff itself up it, there's a laundry list of characteristics of what love looks like so friends love each other and we talked about what what David and Jonathan's relationship was like Jonathan and David loved each other so much it was like they their souls were knit together and it says 
that they um, that they love each other like their own soul. It was that kind of commitment they had one to an another. And so that love that they had, that commitment to one another's well-being, allowed them as through all of the challenges that they faced, that David was being hunted down like an animal and all the things that he went through, he was able to withstand all of that knowing that he had somebody that loved him. He knew that he had a friend. And so I, I would encourage you to just think about that. Uh, before we go into the scriptures, I'm just going to recap a couple of things and, and then we'll move forward. So the first thing I wanted to recap is the fact that if you haven't already, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and just dropping that word that represents your, your mental state or how your day is going so far. Uh, the second thing that I would ask you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is hitting that share button to uh, invite some in uh, to participate with us that may have not been um, uh, aware that we are having this group care session, this midday motivation. The third thing that I would ask you to do, and, and you can go to my uh, Facebook uh, feed and you, you'll actually see that I've already done it and um, my, my friend has also done it, and that is I'm challenging you friend is not going to let you get away with trifling this. They expect too much of you. They're going to challenge you when you're cutting corners. They're going to challenge you when you're trying to half step and do less than what you can do. And the reason is because they understand that you are going to be destined for greatness and character development is something that you have to commit to all along the way. Character development is not something you do once and for all. Character development is something that requires daily routine maintenance. And so, um, pardon the, the brief interruption, but I just wanted to, so you can come back in. We just encourage you to come back uh, and join us. Um, I, I just wanted to just, just remind you that your friend is going to challenge you to make sure that you are working on your daily character development. What they're going to do is just like you eat every day, and it is a necessity, they're going to make sure that you're working on your character every day. It's a necessity. That's what a good friend will do. And so let's look at the scriptures and let's kind of look at um, the example that we said of authentic friendship, a relationship uh, that David had. And one of the things that I'll tell you is David was blessed. And the reason I say David was blessed is because David actually had two real friendships in his life. And I'll, I'll talk about both of those friendships and then I'll give you another example in the scriptures of a solid friendship that's very authentic. So if you kind of think about the first friendship that David had, this was one that he had when he was younger. And then I'll talk about another friendship that he had when he was older. So when he was younger, uh, he had a friendship with Jonathan. And now one of the things I think is important for you to understand about that friendship with Jonathan Jonathan was Saul's son. Saul was the king. That means that as the son of the king, he was next in line to be king. He was heir to the throne. He was going to be the one that could be the next king um, by right. Uh, and yet, he saw something in David that he was willing to sacrifice his throne. He was willing to sacrifice being in um, the, the position of king so that David could fulfill his greatness as king of Israel. Now, it's important for people to recognize that uh, friends see the greatness in their friend and don't get jealous. Uh, friends see the possibilities in their friend and don't try to undermine it. They try to cultivate it and try to shepherd it to make sure that it reaches full fruition. There's no coincidence that some of the great athletes uh, that have been able to uh, reach high levels of success, like the LeBron Jameses of the world, also have made sure that they stuck very closely to the friends that they had that believed in them, even in the early stages uh, of their careers. Even before they became famous, even before they came great, they had people that knew they were gonna be great and stuck with them and pushed them and challenged them to be great. That's what a friend will do. And so Jonathan did not try to fulfill his own selfish ambition, but rather he was willing to help David fulfill his um, God-given purpose. And that would be to rule on the throne of Israel. 
and to also be uh, the father of what was to become uh, the lineage of the Messiah. Uh, Jonathan helped David uh, navigate the confusion that he was dealing with and knowing that all he was trying to do was help uh, King Saul, but yet at every turn he was finding himself being challenged and attacked. Can you imagine that uh, Jonathan was basically helping uh, David through a toxic relationship? The toxic relationship that David had with King Saul, where King Saul wanted to keep him close, but yet wanted to kill him at the same time. Uh, many of us have found ourselves helping a friend that was in a toxic relationship. And this is what Jonathan did for David, was to help him to reconcile uh, that he was destined to greatness, being able to reconcile the things that he was dealing with, while at the same time uh, understanding that at the present, he was being challenged. At the present, he was going through some things. At the present, he, he was not uh, what he was going to be. And Jonathan was able to challenge him and help him and to cultivate him and allow him to ultimately uh, ascend to the throne of Israel. So just think about us, uh, that many of us who may have experienced traumas in our lives, who experienced childhood traumas, traumas in our teenage years, traumas in our early adult years, uh, we need a friend that can help us to overcome these traumas so that we don't find ourselves uh, in a situation where these challenges to our mental health end, or, end up overtaking us and not allowing us to fully enjoy uh, what God has put before us. That the things that we overcome uh, through our friendship are going to be the things that are going to allow us to have a strong testimony to set others free. And many of us know that we wouldn't be here in our sound mind right now if we didn't have a friend. And so we're thankful for a friend. We're thankful for somebody who showed up. And so in these early days, having Jonathan uh, supporting David. And so what happened was in chapter 20 of 1 Samuel, uh, David made a commitment to Jonathan. And he said, Jonathan, just as you are helping me, I'm going to do the same for you and for your family. I'm not going to just receive all of these blessings that you're giving me but I'm also going to reciprocate. Now, unfortunately, before David had the opportunity to reciprocate, uh, Jonathan was killed. Uh, his father Saul was murdered and Jonathan was killed in that same battle. Uh, and so David didn't have the opportunity to be a blessing to Jonathan in that same sense. But what he did do is he kept his vow, his oath, his commitment uh, unto Jonathan in, in 1 Samuel chapter 20 verses 14 through 17, uh, what, what, what David did was he looked for somebody who was in the household of Saul, uh, one of Jonathan's um, uh, family members that he could show kindness to. And he finally found uh, Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. And what he did was he found him and he made sure it was clear that he was going to give him land, that he was going to have someone else tend that land and not only that, that Mephibosheth was going to be able to eat at David's table forever. Um, now, what we learn about uh, Mephibosheth is that he had a handicap. Uh, and that handicap was something that would hinder him. But David did not allow Mephibosheth to allow his handicap to hinder what it is that David was going to do in his life. And what this is giving us an indication of is, again, friends do not look at our shortcomings. They do not look at our handicaps, whether they may be physical or whether they may be mental and de developmental. What a friend will do is they will love you at all times. And what they will also do is make sure their love does not take joy in wrongdoing. They'll make sure that their love brings forth the truth. And the power of truth is truth makes you free. And so what happened here is a man who said that he was nothing but a dirty dog. This is Mephibosheth, how he described himself. I'm a dirty, dead dog. But David was able to elevate him and give him a position in the kingdom that he never imagined he would be able to ascend to. This is the power of what friendship will do. Uh, and so what David did at that time was he was able to be a blessing back to Jonathan, even if it was uh, to the next generation that followed. So what we're saying here is that uh, there was a friend that, that stick is closer than a brother. We have a friend that was demonstrated in this particular case. Jonathan was a friend to David and David was a friend back to the family of Jonathan. 
Now, later in David's life, he had another friend. Uh, and if we were to put this in contemporary days, this is essentially what happened. So instead of David uh, going to work, instead of him uh, taking care of business, he decided to get on Instagram and look at some Instagram models. And uh, he saw one that looked real good across the way. And he, he starts sending her DM messages, uh, telling her she needed to come. This is basically what would happen in today's time. But what David did was uh, he was looking over his balcony and he saw Bathsheba. Instead of going to work, he, he found himself looking at her and he kept looking at her and then he sends somebody to go get her. And then uh, the rest is history. We know what he did. Uh, and he then tried to cover up his mistake. Now imagine his, his friend was dead now and so he didn't have somebody uh, to check his character. He didn't have somebody to continue to, to, to help him to develop. So Jonathan put him on the trajectory to become king, but to stay king, you need to have another friend that is going to be there for you. And so unfortunately, the friend that got him to the kingship uh, was no longer there to keep him in the kingship. And so there came along somebody else uh, that filled that void, somebody else who was willing to be a truth speaker, a truth teller, somebody who was willing to stand up and speak truth in love. Now, many of us have people who speak truth to, to us, but they only speak truth when they're mad. Uh, they speak truth in anger. They don't speak truth in love because when they're not angry, they, they're, they're not telling us how they really feel. But a friend, they're going to tell you truth in love. They're going to tell you how they feel about you. They don't have to be angry with you to call you out. They don't have to be angry with you to let you know you're falling short. They don't have to be angry with you uh, to let you know that you need to take it down a little bit. A, a friend is going to be a truth teller. They will tell you truth and they will speak truth in love. And that's what we all need. We need somebody who is going to help us, challenge us, push us to make sure that we are going to grow and be what we need to be. So when we have a friend and for some reason that friend is missing, we have to fill that void because we are never going to have that eighth sense without a friend. We're not gonna be able to understand our social awareness, that consciousness of where we fit in the social realm within this world without that eighth organ, that, that eighth sense, that friend. We need a friend. And so that friend void was filled by somebody who said, David, you were wrong. And let me tell you a story about it. Can you imagine a man that all he has was this you lamb and, and somebody who had everything, everything they could ever imagine. He comes and he takes that you lamb from that man. What would you say to a person like that, David? That person needs to be punished. They need to be killed. There, there needs to be consequences for that person. And this is where the truth teller comes in. The truth teller said, David, thou art the man. You're the one. Many people, because he's the king, they would be tiptoeing, trying to clout chase and try to align with him so that they could be uh, in a position, could have them a little kingdom, have them an ambassadorship or whatever it might be. But a real friend will say, look, David, I don't care who you are. You're wrong. You're wrong, David, for what you did. You sent Uriah to the front lines and killed him so you could have his wife and cover up your sin. That's wrong. You need to repent. You should be ashamed of yourself. A friend would not allow you to try to get into cover-up mode. A friend would not even have allowed you to even go there. A friend is going to call you out, not just privately. They will call you out publicly if necessary. That is what friends do. And so to think about this, the power of the fact that many of us can go a whole lifetime without one good friend. Because in order to have a friend, you have to show yourself friendly. But the fact that David had two good friends, he had Jonathan in his youth, and he had Nathan in his older age. Two people who were willing to tell him the truth, to be a blessing to him, to be able to stick with him and not abandon him when he was down. That is what a friend will do. A friend will fight for you, and a friend will fight with you. That is what friends do. And when I say they fight with you, yes, side by side, but they will also fight you to make sure that you stay on track to your destiny. They will fight you when you're going in the wrong direction to get you back on the right path. That is what a friend will do. An authentic friend is willing to stand in the gap because, as we said, the word means to shepherd, to pastor, to make sure that you're nurtured, you're nourished, to make sure your character is being developed. That is what a friend will do. And so if you think about it, uh, I, I'm amazed at what David did for Mephibosheth, and it reminds me what Jesus did on, on the cross. Jesus looked down at his mother and he realized that she needed a friend. 
Uh, she didn't need family at the time. His brother James was there. You know, Jude was there. He had relatives uh, that were there. But if you notice what Jesus did is he did not say, family, I'm about to be out of here. Take care of mom. Uh, that's not what he did. What Jesus did was he was looking for a friend for her. And he said to John, the one that he loved, the one who he knew had the right spiritual compass, the one that he knew was going to do the right thing. He said, woman, this is your son. This is a son. Look at this woman. Take care of her. And it said that John took her into his house and he took care of her and nurtured her and nourished her uh, for, from that point forward. Now, think about that. John was one of the poorest uh, people in that situation. So it wasn't about money. He wasn't a relative. So it wasn't about blood is thicker than water. When it comes to friendship, Jesus knew who was going to be a friend to Mary and who was not going to be a friend to Mary. And he said, John, thou art the man. You're the one that is going to be a friend and take care of Mary. That is what we're looking for. All of us need a friend. All of us need an authentic friend. All of us need somebody who's going to be a truth teller in our lives. That's what we need. And so I'll, I'll wrap up by saying this. I'm reminded of the relationship between Naomi and Ruth. And as you can imagine, Naomi said, look, I'm going, I'm devastated. I've lost, I, you know, I've experienced loss. I, I've lost my sons. I've lost my husband. I'm going through all of this traumatic experience. Um, why don't you go and, and just take care of yourself? Just be all right. And, that, and Orpah did that. Um, but what Ruth said was, look, I can't leave you in this condition. I can't abandon you in this condition. I love you at all times. I'm not going to love you just because you were on top. I'm not going to stick with you just because you were on top. Now that you're at your worst, now that you're at rock bottom, it's even more reason for me to be here with you. So I want you to know that where you go, I go. And what where you live, I live. And I want your family to be my family and I want your God to be my God I am committed to you I love you like my own soul this is the this is the message that Ruth was sharing just like Jonathan and David Ruth and Naomi friends you don't need to have a thousand you don't need to have 50 you just need one good friend and then all these rest of these acquaintances they'll just fill in some gaps we all need a friend we need an authentic friend we need a friend that is going to be there for us, one that is going to nurture us, support us, challenge us, but more importantly, one that's going to tell the truth to us. Why? Because you need a truth teller in your life. Because truth makes you free. And that is why it's so important to have a friend. When you don't have truth in your life, you don't have freedom in your life. When you have truth in your life, you have freedom because truth makes you free. And so as we kind of wrap this up and we kind of think about this, I would just encourage those who are just getting pieces of this, go back to Monday and watch Monday's session where we talk about um, what friendship is not, uh, talk about um, uh, what mutualism is on Wednesday, and then today, authentic friendship. Uh, I know we had a little bit of a glitch and so we came back. And so for anybody who may have missed out on, on a little bit of that, um, just go back and, and just watch this in its entirety. But I would just encourage you to do a couple of things for me. If you haven't already, go ahead and drop that word that represents your mental state right now or how your day has been going. Number two, I would ask that if you wouldn't mind hitting that share button so that you can invite people in. They don't have to, we're coming to a close, but they can still watch this uh, at their own leisure. And then the third thing I would ask you to do is go find a picture of a friend post it on your Facebook feed, tag them, tag Faith Christian Church. And then I would ask you to use the hashtags group care and the hashtag midday motivation. And we just wanna see how this is unfolding. I think a lot of people will be excited to see themselves in a picture, knowing that they've been a friend to you and vice versa. And so I would ask that you would do that, take care of each other, be a friend to one another, and each week we, we, we come together, we, we tune in for Midday Motivations, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12, 15 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we also have Bible study uh, on 7 p.m. On, on Tuesdays. Uh, that's also Central Time. And then Empowerment Prayer Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Also Central Time. Sunday morning worship. Uh, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m. And then 
uh, morning service at 11 a.m. That's also Central Time. You can avail yourselves of any of those things. Uh, but we're just challenging you to come in for group care Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we're going to be talking about happiness. Uh, this is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and so we're dealing with topics that have something to do with mental health. Loneliness last week, friendship this week, next week we're going to deal with happiness. Uh, we thank God for all of you. We're going to have uh, this closing prayer about friendship, and then we'll go ahead and close out. Um, but if you wouldn't mind just availing of yourselves of those two, the three things that I asked you to do, two are very simple. One is just a challenge, and I hope that you're willing to rise to the challenge and accept that challenge. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us, and we thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, continue to watch over each and every one of us, and Lord, if any of us are without a friend, bring a friend into our lives, or if they're already present and we have not appreciated them or we have not recognized them as a friend open up our eyes let the scales fall off and let us see the friendship that is bl blossoming in our lives lord not only should we be receptive to that friendship but allow us to show ourselves friendly we ask that we would be friends to them as well and lord we would be remiss if we did not ask right now that you would cover all those essential workers that go outside of their homes to work and also cover those that are also working within their homes, uh, that we would all, Lord God, be uh, in the right frame of mind. Uh, bless those that are in leadership, both governmental and political, uh, those that are also in uh, corporate leadership, and those that are in spiritual leadership. Bless each and every one, Lord, that as they're navigating a leadership challenge that no one has faced before, uh, that you would give them wisdom, understanding, and revelation knowledge. Keep us all until we can come together again for group care. This we ask right now in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so God bless you. We thank God for you. We appreciate those of you who are tuning in. We certainly appreciate you also for sharing and also looking out for those who, as they drop their word, uh, that seem like they may be being challenged at the moment. I appreciate you for checking on uh, those at that time. And so God bless you. I would encourage you to stay safe, stay healthy. And if you uh, want to make sure that during this Memorial Day weekend, that if you don't have to be out and don't go hanging out with people that you don't know where they've been, uh, I want you to be healthy and take care of yourself. And so stay home as much as possible. God bless you and be safe in Jesus' name.